Cursed is everyone who does not observe and obey all things written in the book of law. Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law, for the one who is righteous will live by faith. But the law does not rest on faith. On the contrary, whoever does the works of the law will live by them. Christ redeem us, redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. In order that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Praise be to God always. Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And there was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. And one of the criminals who was hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God? And since you are under the same sentence of condemnation, but we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he replied, Amen, I say to you, this day you shall be with me in paradise. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own. And after this, when Jesus knew that all was now completed, he said, in order to fulfill the scriptures, I thirst. And a jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop, and they held it to his mouth. And when Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. And then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit.
when Jesus knew that all was now accomplished. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Judas is a man who witnessed many miracles over the years. The thief on our Lord's side is a man who is being deprived of life because of his actions. And our Lord, he came into existence as we considered this morning. He came into this world in order to die. So you have death in very, three very different ways that are taking place. Judas will finish in despair and suicide. This other man, which we call commonly Dismas, but he has no name in the gospel. He recognizes that his death is just. He embraces it. Our Lord, again, amongst all men, our Lord came for the purpose of dying. We enter the world and we will die, period. It's just what accompanies the state of human nature in this age. But our Lord came purposefully to embrace death, to turn it on its head. When I say that Judas was a man who saw miracles, it's because Judas, we oftentimes try to make him some kind of demonic figure, as if he's something else. It's a bit like talking about Hitler and Stalin. They're like different kinds of beings, but they're not. They're people. And each one of us, I, you, each one of us have a profound capability of depravity. But Judas is actually not a bad man. What he, do, what he does is profoundly evil. John that Judas, Judas kept the accounts. So what Judas watched when all these people are walking away is he's watching money go away. He's emptied out of the synagogue. This is ridiculous. And so Judas is already losing the faith at that point. He doesn't believe our Lord, but he doesn't believe. Hanging on to religion that no longer has a transformative aspect to it because it's not conforming to the way I want it to be. Which is why our Lord says at the end of that chapter in St. John, Is it not true that I've chosen all twelve of you, and yet one of you is a devil? And we've talked about that over Lent. What does devil mean? Diabolical. It means to mar, to change them. Diabolate. But that idea, why does that person want to mar it? If you ask them, why are you marring the work of God? They'd say, I'm not marring the work of God. I'm fixing the I'm fixing the doctrine. This is the screaming that we have all over the place. That doctrine is stupid. This teaching is stupid. That's ridiculous. It should be like the world, and then we'll be received by the world. None of this is the doctrine of our Lord. But this is what Judas does. He is a very modern man for that last year. And I began by saying Judas saw miracles. Judas knows the number of times they have tried to kill our Lord. And he's watched them. He's watched our Lord leave. And 
Sometimes we don't even know. The gospel just says, and he passed in their midst. They come to arrest him, they have weapons, and he passed in their midst. Judas sees this. And in Judas' ideas, I'm going to fix this plan of God, which the rabbi is wonderful, he's very loving, he's very kind, he's getting it all wrong. He's aggravating everyone. The temple authorities, for heaven's sakes, if you're the Christ in Israel, you've got to have the temple authorities receive you. You're aggravating them all the time. And so what Judas does is a very human way of calculating. I am going to maneuver Jesus into a place where he's going to have to perform a miracle, a great miracle. And then everyone will see. And when they see it, then they'll believe. Judas reduces religion to magic. It's about getting stuff, about being successful. It's about having the major number of hits on your website. This is Judas' thinking. He's not evil, but he does evil things. This is a lot of definition of the modern world. People are not evil, but heaven knows that they can do evil things. And so Judas is a man like everyone else. Judas is like me. Judas is like, Judas is just a man. Judas is not demonic. Judas becomes demon demonized at the Last Supper. But on Wednesday of this week, that historically we call Spy Wednesday, because it's the day that Judas goes to see the temple authorities and say, well, look, I'll figure out a time and I'll be able to lead you to him. So that what Judas does, and so when they offer money, they offer money, he doesn't go to get money. They offer money because they're mocking our Lord. 30 pieces of silver in the Old Testament under the law of Moses was the money that you gave to the owner of a slave that you had killed. A homicide. So, the restitution was 30 pieces of silver for the death of the slave. So the temple authorities offer 30 pieces of silver in order to mock our Lord. Judas doesn't go there to get 30 pieces of silver. Remember, Judas' attempt is to put our Lord in a position where he'll have to work a miracle. And this is Passover. There are tens of thousands of people in the city. This will be the moment. So Judas is not doing this profound evil of deicide because he hates our Lord. This is a cautionary tale for every one of us. When we receive the doctrine of our Lord, the teaching of the cross, it has a very profound meaning to it. And it's not for us to say, well, it should be this way or that way. But it should be that my life is to conform to that revelation of wisdom which comes through the cross. That are in it, that we saw you. Dismas, on the other hand, this thief, he's a man who has made obviously lots of bad choices and finishes by being executed for being a criminal. We call them thieves, we just know that they're condemned criminals, thief in a general term. But Dismas has arrived at this point where his, the reality of his life is not something he can change. Not something he can conform, not something he can rig, nothing he can manipulate, nothing he can kind of maneuver to make it different. And yet you have the same condition by the other thief who is dying with our Lord. And yet their reactions to that are completely different. Judas, we know, has been maneuvering. Judas is the religious man that wants to make God fit in this little shoebox that I call my faith. And that is why when Judas comes up, when he says, I'll give you the sign by giving a kiss to the rabbi, they don't see him in the nighttime, they don't recognize him. The temple authorities don't know who this rabbi from Galilee he doesn't even live here. So Judas, at their side of the kiss, is not just simply to give a sign, but in Judas' mind, he has that very kind of perverse, twisted religious sense that it's also being paid homage to our Lord. And when our Lord says to him, Friend, betray the Son of Man with a kiss. Our Lord is not being sarcastic. Our Lord truly loves, even when we try to maneuver His works. And this becomes the hour of darkness, but it's
is also when our Lord says, my hour has arrived. The juxtaposition of the hour of men and the hour of darkness and the hour of our Lord, the Son of Man, they coincide in the plan of God. Our Lord, from the moment of his existence, as the function, is inclined toward that death on Calvary. And as we considered this morning, our Lord, from the moment of that conception, had every single detail of his passion before his mind. From the moment of his conception, meeting them, meeting Peter, meeting Andrew, meeting John, meeting Judas, meeting all of them, he knows exactly how this finishes, which is why we have an agony in the garden, because he knows what he has to embrace, because this is the reality for which he came to the world. Judas? Judas wants religion to fit according to his conception. And that's why it becomes a disaster. The things that we wind up seeing, the synodal propositions that come out of Germany, these types of things are all rebellions of religious people. It doesn't mean they're evil. But they poo-poo, we can say, the teaching of our Lord, the apostolic tradition. And so Judas is the man who wants to maneuver God to do things in a specific way. But that is why when our Lord, he does a miracle, a very small, and when he's arrested, and when he asks, who are you looking for? And they say, Jesus of Nazareth, and he says, I am he. They do go back and fall on the ground, but that's it. But you could imagine the excitement of Judas at the time, thinking, this is it, this is going to be it. He watches all of the authorities fall on the ground. He doesn't fall on the ground. They fall on the ground. This is it. He's going to work this miracle. It's going to be magnificent. It's the day before the Passover. This is wonderful. But instead, he just stands there. And we're told they tie him up, they chain him, and they drag him away. This is when the religious man who expects religion to fit his preconceptions falls into despair. The disappointment as well, such and such thing happened to me 10 years ago, and that's why I know for the minutes. This thing, that thing. Judas had an excuse, surely available, but it does not work out to his expectations, and therefore he plunges into despair. And because he hasn't believed, and plus he's now being aided by the devil, as we're told very clearly, that during the Last Supper, when our Lord says to him, what you do, do St. John has that magnificent phrase, and it was night. And he tells us that the devil enters into him at the moment that he receives the morsel, the bread, off of the table the last supper. Judas going out is fortified by the demonic, but in leading up to that moment, all those decisions were his, very much as a man. We dig ourselves deeper when we have preconceptions of what the message of God is meant to be. This is the lesson of Good Friday. Or on the other hand, what is meant to be is, as we say in the Busoyo, it's the opening of our spirit, it's the receiving of wisdom, it's allow us to be able to see. And this is why the difference is with the thief who dies. We call him the good thief, for heaven's sakes, a condemned criminal. Because he has been stripped of everything. But even being stripped of everything and dying, he accepts that death, and accepting the death, he transforms it. He says to the other one, what we receive is just. We deserve this. He doesn't. And he knows something about this rabbi who's died, because he says, when you enter your kingdom, remember me. Think of me. Be mindful of me. It's a profession of faith that Judas does not do. Judas finishes in despair, but the man who embraces his death, well, death, death is just a natural event. We are all going to die. How we die depends upon us. How we embrace it, how we choose it, how we allow it to be transformed by grace. Because the Lord God wants each one of us to have a transformative and leading to glory in the kingdom, death. Who knows? But grace is.
is at work. And that is why Judas refused to be confirmed. Our boy Lord was teaching that the Eucharist you must receive and eat the flesh of the Son of Man who cannot have life within you. And Judas said, this is ridiculous. He hung on to our Lord. He stayed around for another year. And then he thought he'll maneuver it in a very different way of thinking. Dismas lost everything. So Judas' death becomes an expression of his despair and suicide. But Dismas' death becomes an expression of faith and of repentance. That my death that I receive is just. The death that I receive is deserved. It's the prayer that we say every Friday during Lent when we adore the five wounds of our Lord in the adoration of the cross. When we make the act of conformity to the divine will, that we accept the death that God sends us, how he wishes, when he wishes, and in the manner that he wishes. That is a sublime act of faith. And that is what transforms like the good thief to an entrance into the kingdom. Judas, on the other hand, is in despair. And we know that Judas is in hell. Because our Lord says at the Last Supper, it would be better if this man had never been born. He's the only one that we know in the human race who has found damnation. But it is very clear from the mouth of our Lord that Judas is in despair. It begins from a religious man who tries to make God act in a specific way according to his preconceptions and religion, and in his discouragement and disappointment, finishes in despair and damnation. It is a cautionary tale, which is why when St. John writes his gospel, at the end of all four of them, he wants us to understand the depth of what happens when a good man acts in a human manner and doesn't receive grace. So may the Lord God transform all of us to think in a supernatural manner, to have be grateful for the faith that is given to us that illuminates our paths, to inflame us in charity, so that no matter what comes, what obstacle, we will embrace that path, because in the end, our desire is to our Lord, be mindful of enter into your kingdom. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. So on this evening of Good Friday, we do annually our collections for good for Holy Lands. It is for the Christians to aid them in the midst of the chaos, confusion, and constant strife. And grace, the place of grace, is also the place of the cross. And so we will take up a collection now before we continue. When we do the procession, this time we will actually do it three times as we have written that we have not done the last two years. And anyone who actually wants to follow the procession, you're welcome. You don't have to. You can stay in the pews. But if you'd like, we will make the procession around before the adoration of the cross. <laughs> 